Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Last week, Nvidia finally rolled out an auto overclocking feature in its new Nvidia app, basically advertising it as free FPS for any Nvidia GPU owner who's still running their card at sock speeds. So as part of putting together a GPU overclocking guide for the channel, I put it to the test versus a manual overclock. Now, does it live up to the hype? And should you use it? Let's find out. And if you get value out of the video, give it a like as it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 10 or 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And Windows 10 can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. So the NVIDIA One Button Overclocking app, it's not actually new, it's been around for about three years in experimental mode. But last week, NVIDIA finally took it out of that experimental mode and put it fully into the NVIDIA app, which is itself still technically in a beta, but anyone can download it and use it right now. I've been using it for a little while. You can download it using the link down in the video description. Now, previously, when you wanted to overclock an NVIDIA GPU, you'd need to download MSI Afterburner to adjust the GPU core clock, the memory clock, and the power. And while running a benchmark like Heaven or Furmark, you'd start by adjusting the core clock in 10 to 20 megahertz increments until the benchmark crashed. Then you'd basically dial it back just a little until you got it stable. You then repeat the same process with a VRAM clock in 25 to 50 megahertz increments, looking for artifacting on the screen or just a benchmark crash. And of course, you'd need to keep an eye on GPU thermals. Now the goal would be to increase both the GPU core clock as well as the VRAM frequency as much as possible while being stable. Of course, the downside of manual over clocking, it's the potential to damage your GPU if you did it wrong, sometimes even if you did it right. And there was no guarantee that if you did damage the GPU that it would be covered under warranty. My advice, just don't mention that in the RMA. Now, AMD automated this process around 2021 and it's been baked in their Adrenaline driver software since that time. In addition, the auto overclocking allows you to manually adjust the settings as well as undervolt the GPU for lower temperatures, even automatically undervolt it, though you can't both overclock and undervolt it automatically. And as long as you use the presets, it's also covered by AMD's warranty. Now, MSI's Afterburner software, they also implemented this a while back. It basically runs a test on your GPU to determine the increase to core clock and memory frequency. The new NVIDIA auto overclocking feature in the NVIDIA app, it basically looks like it's just a copy paste of MSI Afterburner. What the NVIDIA app promises to do is a smart auto overclock that, like AMD's, isn't gonna void your warranty, and NVIDIA also claims it's not gonna damage your GPU. The NVIDIA GPU overclocking app runs a long duration benchmark of your GPU. Now it says 10 to 20 minutes, but when I did it, it's more like 20 to 30 minutes, but this could vary by GPU model as well. The auto overclocker then gives you a new GPU core speed increase as well as a VRAM frequency increase. Now Nvidia's announcement post states that it's gonna run this test regularly on your system and recommends you let the system idle during that test. Advanced users can also use the sliders at the bottom to adjust the preferred maximum temperature, fan speed, power, and voltage settings, which Nvidia says the app will take into account. Now let's give it a shot using the MSI Slim RTX 4070 Ti Super 16 gigabyte GPU in our MSI Project Zero build we did quite a while back. Thank you to MSI. All right, so I started off using the app with just all the sliders set to their default positions. And after a little over 20 minutes, it basically gave me a core clock increase of 160 megahertz and a VRAM frequency increase of 200 megahertz. Now on the RTX 40 series GPUs, we typically see VRAM clocks able to be pushed by at least a thousand megahertz, a thousand in manual overclocking. So the VRAM boost was a little disappointing to say the least. So I decided to throw caution to the wind and push those sliders all the way to the moon and see what I got. Now surely this is gonna give me a much bigger overclock, right? Wrong, I got 86 megahertz, 86, and the same plus 200 megahertz on the VRAM. So I decided to hit the button again just to see what would happen, and this time I got plus 121 megahertz on the GPU core and the same 200 megahertz on the VRAM. That's our best result so far. Honestly, I'm not sure the sliders actually do anything, but if you played around with it and you've gotten them to do something, then let me know down in the comments. It does seem like it doesn't actually try to test the VRAM, just applies a base plus 200 megahertz overclock to it. For comparison, I spent about 30 minutes manually overclocking the GPU. With just a very quick overclock, I was able to get plus 170 megahertz on the GPU core clock and plus 1200 megahertz on the VRAM. That's six times bigger than the increase using NVIDIA's auto overclocking feature. 
But what does this look like in terms of gaming performance? To find out, I benchmarked four games at 4K Ultra settings, no upscaling, no ray tracing, using our MSI Project Zero build system with the Ryzen 7800X 3D. First up is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 on extreme settings. At stock, we got 79 average FPS with 53 as the 1% low. The NVIDIA Auto Overclock, we saw a 3% increase to both the average FPS and the 1% low. And using the Manual Overclock, we saw a 5% increase to average FPS, but a pretty huge 11% jump in 1% lows, showing how important increasing the VRAM frequency can be in this title. For Horizon Zero Dawn on Ultimate settings at 4K, we got 98 average FPS and 80 is the 1% low. The NVIDIA Auto Overclock increased our average FPS by 2%, but did not increase the 1% lows. With our manual overclock, we pushed the average FPS up by 7% over stock and the 1% lows up by 5.1%. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 4K Ultra settings, our stock GPU got 83 average FPS and 61 for the 1% low. The NVIDIA auto overclocking feature gave us 1% more average FPS, but went backwards by 1% on the 1% lows. Our manual overclock saw an average FPS uplift of 5%, and on the 1% lows, we went up by 7%. Finally, in Watch Dogs Legion, we saw NVIDIA's auto overclocking feature eke out only 1% increase at 4K in the average FPS and nothing for the 1% lows. Our manual overclock pushed average FPS up by 4% over stock and a similar 3% increase for the 1% lows. Looking at all the results, we saw an average FPS increase of 1.4% using NVIDIA's auto overclocking feature with just a 0.5% increase to 1% lows. Now that's in comparison to our manual overclock of 5.1% increase to average FPS and a nice 6.4% increase to our 1% low FPS. So the question is basically, is the feature actually worth using? Well, in terms of a simple overclock to your GPU, it did slightly increase the FPS and it promises not to void your warranty or damage your GPU, so that's something. Though I'm gonna say that modern GPUs are a lot more resilient than they used to be in terms of causing actual damage, but hey, it can still happen. And if that was it, I would say go for it. But the app promises it's gonna regularly run this benchmark, and it took about 20 to 30 minutes for me each time. And because you can't really use your PC while it's running, it does seem like a huge hassle for not a ton of performance. Although I haven't used it long enough to know how often it's gonna run the benchmark, or even if it's actually gonna run that benchmark at all again, even though it says it will. So what would I do to improve this feature? Well, first, if we didn't have to continuously run this benchmark, that would be easy to recommend to anybody. AMD's auto overclocking feature takes about 10 seconds to use. Though you cannot overclock both the VRAM and the GPU core clock at the same time if you're just using the one button feature. But you can select a combo mode of quiet, balanced, or rage mode. And AMD's tuning features in the driver software is super easy to use. I'd love to see NVIDIA copy paste that functionality into their app. I'd also love for the auto overclocking to actually test and boost the VRAM frequencies. For those of you with an NVIDIA GPU, try it out on your GPU and tell me down in the comments what GPU do you have and what GPU core and VRAM boost you got and how does that compare to manual overclock if you've manually overclocked your card. And we're gonna have our GPU overclocking guide coming up soon. And it's gonna include the AMD adrenaline overclocking information as well. Maybe we'll even compare AMD versus NVIDIA auto overclocking features. So stay subscribed for that. And if you got value out of this video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. Meanwhile, check out our best 1440p gaming monitor 2024 buying guide right here. We just released it because pricing has never been better. And we'll catch you on the next one.